أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا أبده ورسوله I seek refuge from the evil preponderance of Satan or Shaitan and I begin in the name of God Almighty the most gracious the most merciful dearest and most beloved and divine brothers and sisters in the fraternity of religion in the concourse of humanity and the brotherhood of man I pray that may the peace and the blessings of God Almighty be with one and all in our country and indeed in the entire world let us all for a moment take a deep breath and send out blessings to the world to all our dead relatives, families, our teachers, to our government, to the Guyana police force, especially as the new year is still beginning, so that we will get positive energies and vibrations, so that the police will be protected, and so that they may be empowered to do their work to combat criminality, and to spread law and order in the country, and to be an example to themselves. Take the opportunity this God bless morning to pray for all those who are ill, O Lord Almighty. We ask that you bless those who are unwell, those who are sick, and we know those who have to leave the world because of old age or what, whatever. May they leave in dignity and honor, and may they be forgiven their sins, and maybe they may rest in paradise. We pray, Lord God of the worlds, for harmony and goodwill. We pray that all those who are unwell and suffering from sicknesses that could be healed, that you heal them. And through your mercy and the might and the glory for which you are, Lord God of the world, that you are going to even help to make the impossible possible. For you are the creator, the master, the cherisher, the nourisher, the sustainer, and the lover of all humanity. You, O oh Lord God, is not only the lover of Muslims, you are not only the creator of Muslims, not that you send revelations to the Muslims alone, but you send revelations to all mankind through their prophets. Those who come to Islam, we welcome them. Those who wish to pray the way they did it through their masters and prophets in time past, we bless them and we pray for them. And we ask that knowledge and wisdom enter into the hearts of humanity and that wisdom for everyone to know, Lord, comes not from the heart that pumps the blood, but from the spiritual heart that is housed within. The heart, the roh, the soul that you have blessed man with, O Lord God of the worlds. My dearest and most beloved and divine brothers and sisters, Today, being the continuation of the new year, I wish to call upon one and all to respect religions, to respect ethnicities, to respect the fact that God loved plurality and differences and he loved colors because he could have created the entire world in the original color that he created mankind. God tells us he made man from black sounding clay black sounding clay therefore man had to be originally black but from that nation came forth all the nations throughout the world through the will of God to be it climatic reasons and uh, through the system created by God Almighty let us respect the plurality and the ethnicities let us respect the fact that in a garden you have different colors. Amongst the birds you have different colors. Amongst the animal kind, uh, even the, the tigers, the lions, the, the, the birds, the, the cows, the, the sheep, you have them all moving together according to their kind, regardless of their colors. They do not choose to differentiate each other because of colors. Only man does this. So I call upon humanity 
for love and goodwill and peace and respect for the ethnicities and the color of man. I call upon love and understanding for those with a difference of opinion as it comes to politics. You might like this party for this reason. I might like that political party for this reason. And that one would like that party for that reason. But we must remember, my divine brothers and sisters, that each has a right. For example, each has a right to its choice. That's why God gave mankind the ability to choose the capacity of thought. And I've dealt with that immeasurably on the electric mosque's presentation of the teachings of Islam which strives to bring Islam and knowledge and peace into your homes through electricity, through YouTube and internet to the world, to all humanity, my brothers and sisters. God Almighty gave us the power of choice. And with that power of choice we can choose to be intolerant. We can choose to be difficult. We can choose to command people who to vote for, or who to like, or who to select, or which imam to support, or which pundit to like, or which priest is good. Why must we do these things? Let us respect each other. So, respect and love must be the basis of our existence on the earth for the rest of the year. And maybe for the rest of our lives. If mankind was to respect each other's ethnicities, each other's nationality, each other's traditions and religions, my brothers and sisters, that becomes dangerous for some people because it will lead to international peace, to world peace. And the warmongers, the resource, the resource stealers, they would not be happy. Those who create and make money by war, war machine, killing machines, killing chemicals, murderous chemicals, they will not be happy. But all in all, we in our hearts, we have the capacity of choice. We have the penchant to love nice things. We love peace, yet some of us go to make war. Let us bear these things in mind. For example, I know some people in the quarantine course and other areas, historically even in foreign lands, and that is why Islam has such serious laws against usury or insurance or, or, or interest. People are lending money at extremely high rates, taking advantage, trying to steal people's lands and properties, even in the quarantine course. Some of them involved in, 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 in creating scare tactics where you hear Bakus attacking people's homes and pelting them and beating them. When it's people doing this and they're drugging the people or pelting them and the hair falling off and they're drugging the water and they're causing people to get sick and so forth because they want to steal people's lands. It is what is in the heart, ladies and gentlemen. And on these people, we can see the evil in their faces. We can see the Satan. The evil preponderances that has entered into their hearts. We pray for them. We pray that God will bless them so they can see the light. We pray for them so that they will correct themselves. We pray for them so that the people they have cheated of the resources and their lifeblood to understand that they will have to die. And all oh, the land and the mud and the dirt and the brick and the mortar and the sand and the steel and the plastics will remain while this body is going to rot away. Yes, we have a right as human beings to go for the good things of the world. The Holy Prophet Muhammad, on whom be peace and blessings of God Almighty, said, All oh people, go for the good things of this world as if you will live forever. Go for the hereafter as if you will die tomorrow. This is the precedent of the Islam. The teachings of the wisdom of the religion of Islam and even of all the religions. Because there's nothing wrong in going for great things and good things and enjoying the fruits of the world according to the laws of man. According to the laws of God. One of the problem is when people break the law to take other people's wealth who have worked for it. 
and they want to take away and s enjoy others, other people's benefit. This is where the trouble starts. And so this is what is in my heart at the moment that I'm lamenting to the nation Guyana. I wish to call upon the country, upon the nation, that we are in a moment of preparing for election, it appears. We have seen a certain political entity which I really have no respect for, too hungish for power, and will do virtually anything to destroy this nation, to destroy this country, to deny opportunities, to deny Guyanese jobs through construction and so forth. They've blocked the million falls, which is something that Guyana needs. The world agrees. The International Development Bank agrees. The Americans agree. The Chinese agree. But this little Lilliputian party, hungry for power in the country, sadly, are trying to stymie and sabotage development in the country. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very disappointed with these guys. At one time I like them. And I'm talking, I'm going to go a bit political here. I'm talking to, about men like Moses Nagamutu. He's too ambitious for presidential powers. Ram Jatan. Too ambitious so that they will destroy the people that have to create them even. And to destroy the nation with their ambition. I dislike and disrespect the Alliance for Change, ladies and gentlemen. I'm advising people of this country to be careful. They are wicked. There are only two political parties that I look up to and respect in this country. And that is the People's Progressive Party and the People's National Congress. Only the two parties that I respect. The People's National Congress should not allow the EFC to compound it and use it. Because that is the way the EFC is making it appear as if they are controlling the People's National Congress. A great, powerful party. Some people will disagree with me. Just as I'm going to disagree with me that the PPP, PPP is also a great powerful party. But they are both great powerful parties. On this open forum, I am calling upon all those who are listening to me to call upon our leadership in the government party, the PPP and the PNC, for them to come together. I am volunteering to be a mediator. To bring these two giants together for the cause of national development. Put aside our differences. Put aside the past. Lock it up. It's good to he who does not remember the past is bound to repeat it. But let us put them aside and move Guyana forward. Can you imagine if we have the powerhouses of the PPP and the powerhouses of the PNC? And we come together and we build a mighty nation and government. Who can stop Guyana from becoming like Singapore and Malaysia? And even going to like nations like China. My brothers and sisters, maybe my emotion is carrying me away. But this is the vision I have. We would like to see the PPP and the PNC together. Not the PNC used and abused by some desperados who want secret meetings. I don't know where's their democracy. Secret meetings, the facts must never be established in the public. There can't be a wicked set of people, this EFC, that they want to hide discussions from the nation of Guyana. Let us think well and think positive and think love our country and care of our country. And whatever happens during the election time, we must never allow any desperados to bring hate and pain to the peoples of this country. We must never, ever allow that to happen. The AFC and its acolytes are so so called independents. One from the University of Guyana, one running some radio station, and, and, and others. A former University of Guyana, and a total, absolute failure in life. Willing to do anything to break this country apart and create a state of war. That is what they want. To 
would break this country up, cause hate and destruction, and that's what they were encouraging the people to do, calling the people cowards, so that they can get some power and they can become some kind of a war lords. That's what they want. They want to become a kind of a war lord. I'm calling for harmony and peace. Look at their principle. Harmony and peace working between the two power forces of the PDP and the PNC. They both came from the same embryo. This both came out of the same womb as twins. And they separated. It is time for the twins to come back together for the sake of the development and growth of this country and forget the past. Lock it in the cupboard. Lock it in the cupboard. They all have some kind of a skeleton along the line. No one is ever perfect. So brothers and sisters, going now more on an international perspective. By the grace of Allah, it hurts my heart to see what has happened in France, where 12 people have been murdered by two or three self-proclaimed self -proclaimed jihadists who are joyful at killing for people who make mockery of our beloved Prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The same thing they did once in Norway. Uh, because they made cartoons of the Holy Prophet and make mockery of him. And a lot of people got annoyed and vexed and those kinds of things. But my understanding is that the same attack on the 12 in France, they normally even attack Christianity and all the religions. So it's not as if they're attacking Islam alone. They even attack political entities, George Bush. And his acolytes that destroyed Iraq. They are like that. That is how they survive. And this is one of the elements of the vagaries of democracy. One of the elements of the vagaries of democracy. I respect it. I, as the spokesperson for the Electric Mosque's presentation of Islam, or the teachings of Islam, if they want to make mockery of the Holy Prophet, should I go kill them? It'll make me a criminal. It will cause difficulties on the Muslims living in their countries. France, for example, has the largest Muslim population in entire Europe. Why make it difficult for those people who will be living there? Who has to work? Who will become suspects? Who will not be betrayed and, and, and denied opportunity? When you land at the airport, they're going to watch you two times. They might put a, uh, an undercover uh, intelligence officer to, to track you. What, what is achieved from these bloody murders of the people because they criticize our beloved prophet? As a matter of fact, I, I turn first of all to Jesus Christ and whom be peace. We're the masters of peace. A mystical master that walked this ark. As did Mount Musa salam, and all the great prophets. Jesus Christ said, if a man slap you on the one side and you can take it, give him the other side. That is a power. That is a power of self-contained divinity that comes within. That if a man slaps you, show him your power and benevolence not by hitting him back but by turning around and giving him the other side to slap there is a powerful symbolic message here from the master the mystical genius or one of the mystical genius that walked this earth whose name is embellished in the holy and the glorious Quran for over 24 times the name of Jesus Christ and whose mother, Mary or Miriam, has an entire chapter of the Holy Quran dedicated to her. Those of you who would like a copy of the Holy Quran, make contact with me at 620168. Ask for Onika or Anne Marie, and they will be happy to give you an English copy of the Holy Quran with the compliments of the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana. What a 
of our friends with whom we work with in this country. And so you can see there's a chapter entitled Miriam, Mother of Christ. Or Mary, in other translations, Mother of Christ. And in that book of the Holy Quran, Jesus Christ, on whom be peace and blessings of God Almighty. A great mystical master name is mentioned 24 times in benevolence and respect. So, my brothers and sisters, he said that. What did Muhammad do? What did this great master teach us? Another mystical master for whom the whole world and the universe were created according to the belief of us Muslims and according to the revelations of God Almighty to this great last seal of prophets to all humanity. And what made him great? Because he bowed in respect to the other prophets. He accepted Christ and Musa and said nothing derogatory ever about any of them. He had to accept them. And it was Jesus Christ who said that they're expecting this. If he does not go, the spirit of truth, which is Muhammad, the spirit of truth, cannot come. And some people believe it's the, the Christians say the Holy Ghost. But did the Holy Ghost that exists before Jesus Christ? Uh, who spoke to Mary and John the Baptist and John the Baptist's mother? So the Holy Ghost. And what he said, and he will show you many wonders. And he will teach you many things. He's not saying it, 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 he. It was about a person. And who is he? The Holy Bible teaches us that this prophet Muhammad will be like unto Moses. And some people like to say that Jesus was like unto Moses. But uh, without being derogatory, Jesus Christ is completely opposite unto Moses. Moses had to wage war. Moses collected new revelations. Jesus didn't. I come not, he said, to change one tittle, one jot, not one dot of the law. But I came to fulfill, that is to live the law. To be an example as to the teachings of all the prophets of the Old Testament. Prophet Muhammad, my brothers and sisters. What would he have done? If he was here and they were making cartoons and mocking him and throwing urine at him and pelting him in the garbage, what would he have done? What would this great teacher, master, light of the universe, the prophet that God sang with his angels when he was born, that blessed him and sent messages? On to the Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was born. Why brothers and sisters? So what would he have done? Would he have picked up machine guns and, 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 and um, a machete and chopped their heads off? Now let me tell you a quick example because my, my operator is saying, mm -mm -mm, giving me signals, time is up. Okay, well, the operator Unika, I'm hearing you. Here is how it goes. One occasion, after he came with this prop, with this message, uh, two, two times, two, two incidences are coming to my head. Two incidents. One when he went, when he went to Taif. I saw Taif when I went to Mecca. Between Mecca and Medina, I saw, I saw the tongue of Taif. When he went to Taif to bring the message and the word of God unto them. Just all he had to tell them was believe in the one God. One God. Believe in one God. But the idolaters, I'm not equating the idolatry of Mecca with what appears to be the idolatry of India. It's two different entirely things altogether for those who have the capacity to comprehend, to understand, to visualize. And understand the concept of Sanatana Dharma and Hinduism. Quite different from the idolatry and the madness that prevailed in the time of Rasulullah during the Mecca. And he had to teach them about one God. And you know what they did to him? They pelted him and they broke his bones and he was busted apart. And he had to run for 
his life. And then he said this was the worst day of his life. But he prayed to God for their forgiveness. And God told them, all you have to do is take the message. I have not sent you, Muhammad, to open anybody's heart and to print anything into their hearts. You just have to take the message. One God. The other, the other incident. Just, just a moment, my brothers and sisters. Time is up. In time? Five more minutes. We're not still on time. Five more minutes is a lot of time. I got a lot of time. You know what I can do in five minutes? On this electric boss, I can take some time to even chat with you. You got time. Don't, don't do this. Don't, don't, don't do this only in the last minute. Okay, coming back to you, brothers and sisters, and the electric mosque's presentation of the teachings of Islam. On another occasion, people were not accepting. People never accept the truth. That's the same way they were trying to destroy all the prophets before, including Jesus Christ, and Musa, and Abraham, and all the prophets. People are always trying to kill them. So, there was this woman who would always make mockery of him. Who would pelt him? Who would throw filth? Who would throw urine? Who would pelt him with garbage? Who would put things in his way to block him from passing and making it difficult for him? And he didn't expect that. So he was always passing that track. She didn't want him to pass that track because she didn't want to accept the religion of one God. God. One God Almighty. Is the religion of Islam, the religion of Jesus Christ, one God. Hear you, Israel, the Lord your God is one God. Moses, Ten Commandments, the Lord your God is one God. Thou shalt, thou shalt worship no other gods before him. One God, always the message throughout history from time immemorial. But brothers and sisters of religion and humanity and intelligence and wisdom. So one day, the prophet was going his way and he saw no blockages. He saw no bricks. He saw no garbage being thrown at him. No urine. Nothing nasty and so forth. So he passed and he should have been happy. But the prophet of Allah, Muhammad and whom be peace and blessings of God Almighty, he said, why? What has happened? He expected the costs and the attack and the garbage. Something must have happened. So he went up and he looked for the woman. And he found that she was bedridden. She was sick. There was nobody look out, looking out for her. And he took care of her. And he fed her. And he gave her sanctuary. He gave her peace and love and harmony. And he never asked her to accept Islam. If we want people to accept Islam, you can't force them like the terrorists in ISIS in Iraq or in such countries, my beloved brothers and sisters, or in Afghanistan, or in my Pakistan. It has to be the way we live. The righteousness, the good, the love, the harmony that we exude. And he took care of her. And he had his daughter watch over her. And his wife watch over her. And nursed her. And then expected again for her to start pelting and throwing. But she came down this other day and said to him, O oh, Prophet of Allah, I submit myself to the fact that there is but one and only one God, Allah. The one and only, that's the meaning of Allah. There is one and only one God. And I submit to God Almighty. And that you are the prophet of God Almighty. So she took what we call the Shahada. She was born again. Islam believe in born again to you know. We're going to talk about this concept of being born again in the religion of Islam. We think it's only it's a Christian concept. This is not so. Every time you take Shahada, you're born again. But we take Shahada five times a day. I should know La ilaha illallah. My shadow. Anna Muhammadan Abduhu wa Rasuluhu. There is but one and only one God, Allah. And 
Muhammad, and only peace and blessings of God is the messenger of God Almighty. By saying this, you accept all the prophets before, before, and you concur that Muhammad is the last of the seal of messages, and that this Quran is the last and final testimony from God Almighty. But it does not mean that throughout the centuries, God will not send redeemers and teachers to guide and conquer us into the new civilization, into the new century. Every year, according to the Islam, is supposed to be a new mujahid or a teacher of the century. My beloved brothers and sisters, spread peace, love, harmony, support the guy in the police force, give them information, help the GRE, show them who are smuggling, who are stealing, who are robbing. You know people want to rob in your community. Expose them. Come together as a people and fight for crime and help this great country of Guyana. Muhammad Rasul.